Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi, and I'm the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide, and I'm a 20 best-selling author, podcaster, speaker, and I work and advocate for people with disabilities. I wanted to tell you a little about okay. myself because I'm very interested in... It all began when I was five years old. My mother heard a gurgling sound in the other room. She went into the other room. She found my lips turning blue and she found me in a grand mal seizure. She had called the ambulance and they took me to the hospital. Previously, I had an ear infection and a virus. And they found that the virus had traveled to my brain and developed into encephalitis. My brain was beginning to swell. So they induced me into a coma. The coma was for four days, but during that time, they told my parents that if I came out of the coma, I would probably be paraplegic or I'd probably have severe brain damage. My father, which is a very touching story, is from the island Hios in Greece. In that time, there was only one church on the island, and in front of the church was a statue, and tears used to roll down the statue's eyes. He was praying by my bedside, hoping that everything would be okay. And when he opened his eyes, he looked at me and a teardrop rolled from my eye. My eyes opened and I looked at my dad. And the first thing I asked for was McDonald's French fries. My parents were thrilled to see that I was okay. I wasn't paraplegic and I didn't have brain damage, but I ended up with epilepsy. Life was very challenging. It was like a roller coaster ride. And especially when I got to college, it got even more difficult. The late night studying, trying to get good grades, getting stressed out, my seizures increased. And it got to one point where I didn't even think I was going to be able to finish college. I was starting to feel hopeless. So one day I wrote a letter to the Epilepsy Foundation in Washington, D.C. They had a magazine and I wrote a letter and I asked them to publish it. And I asked people, how do you cope with epilepsy? How do you get through life having seizures? How, is, how are you able to get through life with a disability? And hundreds of letters from all over the United States and Canada came to my home. I read the letters and I was stunned. For the first time in my life, I realized I wasn't alone. These stories are very inspiring and motivational. And I learned from each of them. As I got out of school, I graduated, of course, and I got landed a big job in New York City, and I was working for this big corporation. And one day I was in the hallway and I felt an aura coming on. And for anyone who doesn't know, an aura is a signal that you're going to go into a seizure. I looked around, I was like, oh my God, where am I going to go? I don't want anyone to see me have a seizure. And I fell to the ground. I was awake, but I was in the seizure and I couldn't move. A producer had walked over me and he kept walking. And I remember thinking to myself, I can't believe he walked over me and just kept walking. And he didn't even try to help me. And 30 minutes later, another co-producer came over and said, Stacy, you're doing a great job, but I'm so sorry. You just don't meet the qualifications. So we're going to have to let you go. I knew I met the qualifications. I knew I was doing a great job. And I knew the reason why they were letting me go was because I had the seizure. So I had spoken to the Epilepsy Foundation and they actually sent me to Washington, D.C. to speak in front of Congress. There, I poured my heart out and I talked about the stigmatized world that we live in. And later on, one of the congressmen came over to me and I noticed that he was crying he took out his handkerchief and would wipe his eyes. He shook my hand and he said, you brought back a lot of memories to me. He goes, my sister had epilepsy. This shows you how many people in our life live with disabilities, invisible disabilities, regular disabilities where you can see that something is not right with the individual. But our world is so stigmatized. Sometimes it could be very challenging and it could be very hard for an individual because people like myself, even at one point, I wanted to feel like the normal person. And it was a, it was very tough living with a disability. So later on in life, I had worked with an herbalist and I had worked uh, learning about natural healing and I 
realized that there were a lot of things I could do besides my medication. So taking my medication and applying healthy eating, a healthy lifestyle, I had reduced my seizures from 12 to nine to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one to being controlled. Later on, I wrote my book, Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And I incorporated all those stories into my book, along with the regimen that I created for myself that helped me. And I remember receiving an email from somebody saying that I was on the verge of suicide. I couldn't take living with a disability anymore. But I saw your book in Barnes and Nobles and it inspired me. I felt like I had a will to live. You saved my life. And today I follow your regiment and I'd like to thank you. It was then I realized the power and of wis the wisdom of, of words, how powerful it could actually be, how you could actually change someone's life by the words you speak, by the things you say. And I de dedicated my entire life speaking in front of individuals, working with advocate groups, working with organizations for disabilities, epilepsy, autism, all different types of uh, disabilities. And I even was an advise. I worked on the advisory boards for Sinovian Pharmaceuticals. I still do as speaking from a, a patient's perspective. So they understand what patients go through. And I also work with another pharmaceutical company as well, doing the same uh, job. I spent my life trying to help in my, people. In my speaking now, events, I like to teach people about how to cope with disabilities, how to get through it, how to live a healthy, happy, and productive life. And I've created easy follow through steps that could actually change individuals' lives. Thank you so much for giving me this time to share my story with you. And, and thank so you very much for your time. Have a great day.